Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I hope everybody is enjoying the session so far. Uh, my name is Paul Osman and I work for Honeycomb. Uh, we're a tool that lets you uh, see what's going on in your production applications. So help you with debugging and uh, you know, fixing performance issues. Um, I work primarily on instrumentation. So that includes uh, pretty much everything that helps you get data into Honeycomb. So let me start off with a perspective on instrumentation. Um, so, you know, the way I see it, and I think, uh, you know, the way our product certainly thinks about things, observability isn't a binary. It's not like you do something and then all of a sudden you have observability. Um, I think of observability as more of a journey. So uh, you can get telemetry from your system that helps you figure out, you know, what's going on in production and how your users are experiencing your application. Uh, and that telemetry can vary in the degree to which it helps you answer questions. And so I think of this journey as, you know, starting, people start at various points. Uh, you can start with gathering external telemetry about your service. And that can be anything from structured logs, um, you know, host level metrics, uh, things that are outside of your actual code. And these are valuable because they tell you something, right? They tell you something that's going on um, about your system but they're not great at answering questions about what's happening necessarily in your code. Uh, you know, how long a particular function is taking to run or how long a database call, uh, you know, takes to run or how long, you know, how much latency there is between services, et cetera. So a step up from that in terms of answering those sorts of questions is what we call auto instrumentation. And auto instrumentation is this notion that, you know, you add a library or you add, uh, you know, something to either the framework or to the code itself uh, that, you know, powers your service and you start gathering data automatically. And this can be incredibly useful because you can hook into, um, you know, if you're using a framework like Java Spring Boot or you're using Ruby on Rails or something like this, you can hook into the framework to answer certain questions. Uh, what sort of HTTP method was uh, used to make this request? How long did the request take overall? Uh, what were the various parts of the request? Um, and so on and so forth. And so auto instrumentation can get you really far. But at the end of the day, at some point, in order to achieve the sort of best observability you can achieve for your system to be able to answer questions uh, that only you know you really need to do custom instrumentation. Uh, and that means actually instrumenting your code with uh, either spans if you're doing tracing uh, or events if you just want to emit some information or metrics if you want to count gather counters, et cetera. And that's where we get into you know, modifying your code. And modifying your code, as we all know, is expensive. Uh, it takes a fair bit of work. And I love this quote, by the way. Uh, this was um, actually one of our, uh, somebody who uses Honeycomb, uh, you know, just mentioned this, like uh, using automatic instrumentation is teaching your code's word that's words that someone else thought would be useful. And I love that, that way of putting it because uh, that definitely mirrors my experience. You know, these are words that can commonly be useful in services. Uh, but they're not necessarily the things that are most useful for your system. Only you know the answer to that, uh, which kind of, you know, touches on my point about needing to do custom instrumentation. So let's talk about the kind of data that you can get when you start doing custom instrumentation or even auto instrumentation. Uh, one of the most, so Honeycomb is actually an event-based system. Uh, we collect events uh, and those events can be arbitrarily wide. So you can add as many fields as you like to an event and then we allow you to query by or aggregate on uh, any fields that you send to us, uh, no matter the cardinality. Uh, and that's great. If those events contain certain information, we can string those events together as spans in a trace. And this talk today is focusing uh, really just on tracing. Um, I'm not gonna cover metrics, even though OpenTelemetry has a lot of great solutions for metrics. Uh, I'm gonna talk about using OpenTelemetry, specifically the OpenTelemetry collector, uh, to enhance how you, do, um, how you do tracing in your application and get traces. So I wanted to put this screen up just to kind of show you, you know, first off, uh, a screenshot of Honeycomb, uh, you know, showing a trace in an application, but also for, any, for anybody who hasn't used tracing before, who hasn't used a product like Honeycomb or Lightstep or an open source platform like Jaeger or Zipkin, 
Um, a trace can be thought of as causally related spans, a collection of causally related spans. And so in this example trace that I have here, I've got a request to a service called front end and it, the endpoint is slash product. That service then made a call to a product catalog service, a recommendation service, a product catalog service, and an ad service. And you can see the, the hierarchy of calls here. And then you can see you know, information about the duration of each of those calls. Importantly, each of these spans also has an arbitrary number of fields associated with it. Depending on the standard, there's different names for these. Uh, they could be called attributes on a span. Uh, honeycomb, uh, like I said, we care about events. Uh, we call them fields, uh, fields in the event. But they're all the same thing. So there's a bunch of different tracing formats out there, and I mentioned a few. Um, Zipkin and Jaeger were uh, two, two tracing formats that were part of the open tracing standard. Uh, open tracing defined an API and a structure to, span, to uh, tracing data. Uh, and that helped kind of, you know, create some uniformity. Open Census was uh, uh, another system. It has its roots in Google. Uh, Open Census uh, started to become pretty popular. And, um, you know, there was this problem in the, in the world of telemetry and observability where now all of a sudden you had two standards that were sort of competing with each other. And that's not always great for users. Uh, it's not always great for vendors. And so a bunch of people got together and created the Open Telemetry project with the goal of actually combining open tracing and open census into one unifying standard for telemetry data. Um, like I said, my talk is focused on tracing, uh, and some of the demos that I'm going to show you have to do with tracing. Um, but you can really, you, open telemetry also deals with metrics um, and increasingly logging, uh, which is really exciting. So open telemetry has its own format. And then there's a bunch of vendor specific formats. Uh, I, I mentioned I work on instrumentation at Honeycomb. Uh, we have a bunch of libraries and SDKs that help you get data into Honeycomb. And those all um, you know, wrap our HTTP API, which uh, accepts JSON payloads. Uh, Lightstep have a format, Amazon X-Ray. Um, you know, vendors all have introduced various formats over the years to make it easy for people to get data into their systems. Um, so what I want to walk through today is, you know, solving this problem of what happens if you've already invested a bunch of effort in instrumenting your system. And, you know, it would be absolutely cost prohibitive to ask uh, most organizations to go and re-instrument your entire system if you wanted to use some new product uh, or some new feature uh, of a product. So for example, imagine you've invested, you know, months, maybe even years, instrumenting your system with uh, an open standard, um, like, uh, or an open source project like Jagger. Okay, so you've used all the libraries, uh, all of the languages that you deploy code in, you know, had good support, and you're comfortable, you have, you have good observability, and you're using Jagger to look at your traces and everything. But you want to try out a product like Honeycomb, or Lightstep, or another vendor, or you want to try out some other open source projects that support some of these standards, you really don't want to have to go through and re-instrument your code. Um, you know, doing that would be a non-starter for a lot of people. It's hard if you have one code base. It's really hard if that code base is large. Uh, it's exceptionally difficult if you have more than a few code bases. Uh, at that point, you know, and I've, I've been there in previous roles where, you know, I've been on teams that helped, uh, you know, work, uh, do SRE for, you know, hundreds of services. And getting an organization to lift and shift like that would just be absolutely huge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through a demo of using open telemetry to address a few use cases that I think make these kinds of journeys easier. Um, and specifically, I'm going to show using the open telemetry collector uh, to kind of, you know, detach those requirements, your instrumentation from the back end that you're using. And then I'll walk through a few cool things that you could do once you are using the open telemetry collector. So the Open Tele Telemetry Collector, uh, it's part of the Open Telemetry ecosystem. Um, I'd encourage you to go to opentelemetry.io, just take a look around. Um, there's a lot of components to the project. Uh, there are language specific SDKs, and you can use those language specific SDKs along with an exporter to uh, hook it up to a backend. Or you can use the Open Telemetry Collector. And so what the Open Telemetry Collector does is it's composed of various components uh, called receivers, and uh, processors and exporters. 
And you know, this diagram kind of shows at a high level, you can have traces, uh, you can have telemetry or instrumentation, sorry, in a variety of different formats, run it through the open telemetry collector, and then export it into a variety of different backends, regardless of the, uh, of the actual format you use for your instrumentation. And so the configuration happens, and I'll walk through examples of this, uh, using you know, this, these pipelines, this notion of a pipeline. And I really like this because it allows you to specify you know, one or more receivers. And so you can even mix and match your uh, instrumentation. So you can have some services instrumented with Jaeger, some services instrumented with uh, OpenCensus, and you can have uh, receivers configured in your open telemetry pipeline for each of those. The next step is it runs uh, traced uh, data through processors. And processors, I'll show a few use cases uh, for processors, but they allow you to modify or scrub or otherwise mutate trace data in flight, uh, which can be really powerful. Um, one of the biggest use cases there is, of course, you know, sampling, uh, also modifying uh, span data, scrubbing PII, et cetera. And then at the end of the pipeline, you have uh, exporters. And exporters are the things that you know, vendors provide or open source contributors can provide, provide that allow you to string together uh, your trace data into some backend. So let's go through a demo. Let's go through a few use cases. And uh, the first use case I'm going to show is you know, what I talked a little bit about earlier, which is you have, let's say, you know, dozens of services. You, uh, you know, were ahead of the curve. You've been using Jaeger for a while. Um, and, or another open source project, and you want to try out a product like Honeycomb or Lightstep or some other backend for your, for your tracing data. Um, like I said, you don't want to go through and re-instrument and redeploy all of your code. And so I'm going to show you know, a, a way to use the open telemetry collector to do a zero code uh, redeploy uh, the collector that allows you to you know, migrate backends. Uh, specifically, I'm going to show taking a service going to Jaeger um, a bunch of services actually writing trace data to Jaeger uh, and then use the collector to um, actually write to Jaeger and Honeycomb at the same time, show the trace data in both. Uh, and then you can imagine being on a team, if you're using a tool like Jaeger, you don't want to you know, organize like a big shutoff point where all of a sudden you're turning things over to a product like Honeycomb. You want to be able to use them both at the same time while you're transitioning between products. So let's take a look. All right, so in this uh, window here, I'm gonna run, I have a bunch of terminal windows. Uh, I'm gonna run the OpenTelemetry collector. I'm using a version that I've compiled. Uh, there are, of course, Docker images that are published. Um, in fact, let me go and show you. I would encourage you to go to opentelemetry.io, uh, go to documentation, collector, and you're gonna be able to see how you can get this yourself, uh, either using um, a pre-built image or uh, just cloning from GitHub. So uh, let's see, first thing I'm gonna do, the other component I'm using is uh, the synthetic load generator uh, created by the good folks at Omniscient. Um, this is a Java project that just uh, simulates a bunch of services uh, that are instrumented with Jaeger uh, publishing trace data. So really useful when you're trying to simulate a bunch of traffic and you don't want to touch prod yet because you're doing a demo or because you're just trying a product out. Uh, and then I'm going to run Jaeger. Uh, I'm going to run Jaeger just using um, the Docker um, image that's hosted on Docker Hub. And I'm going to run it like this. So what I'm doing here, uh, actually, let me not do that. Instead, here we go. I'm going to run it like this. Uh, I'm exposing a few ports, uh, specifically different uh, Jaeger ports uh, for the web UI and for ingest. Okay, so that's running in this terminal. This can, of, co of course, all be run on Kubernetes. This can be run however you like it. Uh, and so I've got port um, 14268 uh, open, and the synthetic load generator is going to start publishing uh, trace data to that port. So I run the synthetic load generator. Uh, imagine this is a bunch of different services that are running. And let's see, I should start getting trace data. Okay, so I'm getting emitted trace ID, you know, logs that are showing me that things are happening. Good. So let's take a look at some of these traces. All right, I've got Jaeger running locally. This is the Jaeger UI. And I can already see that I've got a bunch of services that are receiving data. Uh, so that's good. So let's take a look and let's look at some traces. Excellent. Uh, 
So if I click on one trace, I can see all of the various spans. So this is very similar to the honeycomb screenshot, just uh, you know, visualizing a, span, or a trace in Jaeger. Uh, if I click on an individual uh, span, sorry, I can see the tags, I can see metadata uh, that gives me information about that. All right, so we're getting data, that's great. Uh, this is a world a lot of people exist in, you know, they're using a tool like this. Now let's say uh, you want to um, introduce something like Honeycomb. So you want to do a migration or you want to explore a new tool. The first thing I'm going to do then is instead of publishing my trace data directly to Jaeger, I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to shut down Jaeger and let's see. I'm going to run Jaeger, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to expose port 14268 anymore. Uh, I'll expose the web UI. I'll show you why in a moment. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the open telemetry collector um, and use it to intercept that data. So let's see. Um, so this is the config I'm going to use. And notably, I've got one receiver. Uh, it's uh, the Jaeger receiver. It's going to accept uh, data on this endpoint. So it's going to listen on port 14268, which I didn't enable in my Jaeger uh, instance. And I'm going to configure these exporters. Um, the most obvious one is Jaeger. It's going to publish uh, to a locally running Jaeger instance. Um, I've also got this logging exporter. And this is really useful when you're experimenting with the OpenTelemetry collector, because you can see in real time what's happening without having to go back uh, you know, to the web UI constantly. You can just make sure that things are happening. Uh, and then I've got these pipelines. And I mentioned pipelines uh, are the kind of core way that you configure the open telemetry collector. So a pipeline, I've got one called traces, and I've got one receiver and one exporter. Uh, in effect, I'm going to put logging in there too. Okay, so I've got two exporters now. Um, pretty basic, but it will get the job done. So let's do this. Step one, uh, and these YAML files, of course, um, well, this one is pretty basic, but I'm going to introduce more to it as we go. Okay, so I run that data, and now it's going through the open telemetry collector, going to Jaeger. Hopefully, I should be able to, I'm getting debug log output, so I should be able to go to Jaeger now and see that I'm still getting trace data. That looks good. All right, and I'm getting all of this through the open telemetry collector now. So I've, I've already introduced some value in that I've uh, abstracted out my instrumentation from my backend. Okay, so let's throw Honeycomb in there. So what I'm gonna do in order to get this publishing to Honeycomb is I am going to add an exporter. Uh, so Honeycomb is one of the export, uh, supported exporters. There are also exporters I've mentioned for, you know, Stackdriver, for Lightstep, for a whole bunch of different products. But let's just add in Honeycomb here. Uh, and there are different configuration options for different exporters. Let's see. Okay, so for Honeycomb, I'm going to specify an API key. Uh, I'm not going to put my real one, but data set. I'm going to create a data set called uh, CloudCamp and API URL honeycomb.io. And that should be enough. Yeah. Oh, and then, sorry. I'm also going to go into my uh, exporters here and add the honeycomb exporter. So just configuring the exporter isn't enough. I have to add it to my pipeline, which makes sense because I have configurable pipelines that can string together different uh, combinations. All right. Okay. Now let's start up Jaeger again. Good. Start up my synthetic load generator. Excellent. And now at this point, let's go over and make sure that we're still getting data in Jaeger. Good. Looks like it. There we go. There's some traces. And now I'm going to go over to Honeycomb. And I'm going to see that there's a data set that's just been created called CloudCamp. Uh, data sets are just ways of grouping data in Honeycomb. If I click on this, I should see I'm starting to get data. Perfect. So let me run a query. I'm just going to do a straight count query, look at the actual events that I'm receiving. 
All right, uh, I'm gonna restrict it to the last 10 minutes. Okay, looks good. Um, so you can see here, I'm looking at duration, or let's, let's change that to count. Okay, good. Uh, let's take a look at some of this data in more detail. So if I click on the traces tab, I can see that I'm getting traces here. Very similar to the screenshot I showed. You get all of the fields uh, that were being published to Jaeger. And I'm gonna take a look at the trace ID here, and I'm just gonna copy it over to Jaeger, to my Jaeger UI, and show that I can look at the exact data in Honeycomb and Jaeger. And this way, you know, it's a very no-code way of being able to try out a product and see if it fits your needs. All right, so that was step one. Pretty cool. Let's go back and see what else we can do with this. So I mentioned um, that migrating backends, that's the first use case I'm gonna cover. Scrubbing data. Uh, so now that I have data going through the uh, open data collector, I can start to use processors. And like I mentioned, processors are really powerful. Uh, they allow you to mutate span data in flight. And this is, a, this is a really valuable thing. So let's go back to our config. And now what I want to do is I want to add something to our pipeline. Specifically, I want to add a processor. And uh, let's see, there is, there's a processor that's built in and it's just called the attributes processor. I'm gonna give it a name, delete. And what I'm gonna say here is actions. So what this is gonna look at is it's gonna look at attributes or as we call them fields in Honeycomb. Uh, and I have this, I have region data coming in for each, uh, for each span. So I'll show you that. Let me take a look, run a query, and I'm gonna group it by region. All right, so I can see I've got US East, US West, then I've got a bunch of spans that don't have a region at all. Let's say I just don't want to record that data. Uh, it's not reliable, it's not being recorded properly, so I wanna take that out. If I go back to my YAML here, I say key region action delete, and then I add this to my pipeline. Uh, delete. Okay. And I'm just seeing if there's any questions. Let's see. Um, all right, I think I'll end with a poll because I have a poll. Ready. Okay, so I've now got this running. Uh, let me see. Let's say step three off should be. Okay. Restart the collector, restart my load generator. All right, let's go back into Honeycomb. And I'm running this uh, you know, query still. Let's take a look. And what I should start to see after a little while is, yeah, the only data I'm getting now has no region data um, because I'm mutating the span in flight and deleting that data uh, before it gets to Honeycomb. So this is a bit of a contrived example running, uh, you know, um, doing it on region, but imagine you have some PII or something like that that you don't want to land in a vendor backend. That's a very good use case. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to introduce one last use case and that's actually modifying or setting some span data. Um, so let's say you want to go in and uh, actually update the span or set some data on the span. Uh, that's something you can do too. It's using the exact same processor. So what I'm gonna do here is instead of delete, uh, I just go in and let's see. Actually, you know what, we're running out of time. So I'm just gonna show the documentation because this is something I wanted to run over really quickly. So if you go to the Open Telemetry Collector GitHub repository, it's linked from the docs. Uh, let's see, there is some good documentation here. You can see uh, configuration, you can see processors, 
And this will walk you through everything that you can do with processors. So I was just using the attributes processor and uh, you know, that shows you all the use cases there. All right, so let me see if I can figure out how to get this poll going because I want to end with a poll quickly. And I don't see the option. All right, something must have gone wrong. I must have not queued up properly. That's okay. We'll just keep going. Okay. So just to summarize, uh, you know, the open telemetry collector will allow you to, um, you know, detach changing code in order to change the way that your telemetry data is uh, sent to backends or processed in flight. Uh, and that can be really, really powerful because as we all know, code deploys aren't always an option and certainly re-instrumenting your code is prohibitive. So definitely check out opentelemetry.io. Uh, here at GitHub links, the open telemetry collector has a repo and then there's a contrib repo. You wanna go there if you want any of the open source contributions or any of the vendor specific stuff actually is really what, what, what is in that repo. Uh, images published a Docker. Uh, you can just pull down an image and start experimenting. And then docs.honeycomb.io slash getting data in. This is uh, you know, anything that you want to know about getting data into Honeycomb. Thanks very much.